Hello everyone, welcome to BI Consulting Pro. This is our latest video and in this video we are going to explain the top 4 new features in Power BI. But before going into that, don't forget to download the latest version of Power BI desktop application. So enough all the talking, let's get started. If you are over here for the very first time, please consider to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest updates and videos. The very first feature that we are going to talk about here is customize shape formatting. Now you can customize the formatting of the shapes you add to your Power BI reports. Microsoft added a number of controls into the shape card of the formatting pane for a variety of different shaping options including rounded rectangles, chevron, arrows, and more. Now I'm gonna show you how to use them. So first of all, you have to come under the insert tab, which you can see over here on my desktop. And there is a shape button. So from here, you can add a shape to your report. So for example, I'm taking this one, pill. So I can take it from here and now I have different options that I can format this shape. That means I can select this shape and I can go to my formatting pane over here, which is format shape. I can come under this shape button, click on this. Right now it's pill, but I can change it to arrow. I can change it to chevron arrow. I can change it to something else as well. Like for example, heart if you would like to and now you can see that this is a shape of a heart so it depends upon what you are looking over here or how you want to format your shape you can do that over here before that it was not over here in power bi desktop but now it's there and i'm hoping it's going to help you a lot in order to design your reports and dashboards now let's move to the feature number two that is x axis constant line before that also they have the x-axis constant line and before that one too they have the y-axis constant line in the analytics pane. Now what we can do, you can come over here, this is a simple graph and before going into that if you would like to see my data model I can show it over here to you. It's a very basic star schema based data model which is from the AdventureWorks 2019 data warehouse. So, over here, what you can do, you can come into this analytics pane, just click on this and here you will find multiple options that is adding a trend line, y-axis constant line, x-axis constant line. So since the time Microsoft introduced the x-axis constant line, Microsoft received a lot of feedback on ways they can make it an even more useful reference on a Cartesian chart. So this month onwards, they have bring this for everyone it's generally available and in that one we have multiple options and what are those options i'm gonna show you over here so what you can do first come over here and say add one constant line for the x-axis you can rename it if you would like to and i'll say shaded area you can give it any name depends on what you want whether you are gonna show some sales gapping or anything that totally depends on you and here either you can use the expression that is even you can click on this and once you will click this is going to open and here you can select the field value and based on that you can get it over here but i don't need that i just want to demonstrate on x-axis i have over here the date so what i want to do i want to just directly input my values over here and for that i can select a date using this calendar icon or i can input myself so let's use the calendar icon so now you can see I have a constant line over here, but it's not over yet. So here now you have a different formatting options. First of all, you can choose your line color. So let's say red, for example, in our case, now you can set the transparency, whether it's a zero or you want to make it fully transparent. So fully transparent, you won't be able to see that. So let's say 33% over here. Now you can choose your line style, whether you want dotted solid or dashed so let's say dotted there's also a part whether you want to have your position in front or in the back side so front or back means the chart that you are looking over here so whether you want to put behind this line the chart line or 
in the front side so it's up to you you can choose it over here but the most important feature is the shaded area so what you can do over here you can select right now it's none so that means there is no shaded area but i want to do it after this one so i can select after and now you can see the shaded color is also appearing over here so let's select this color so let me select the transparency on 65 percent for this shaded area and if you want to switch on the data label as well you can switch it on over here just toggle it and you will see your data label is appearing over here next to that there are again formatting options how you want to format your data label over here you can see name name and value so over here you can see the name is shaded area shaded area is the name of your x-axis constant line and here you can see the date or in your case you want to give it some another name you can give it then you have different formatting options which you can use over here so not only this if you would like to add another constant line you can do that too just click on this add button and here you can give the value in our case we are gonna give again the date over here 2013 and this time we are gonna line color is again the red and it's gonna be dotted and if you want to switch on or turn on the data label you can do that over here again and that's how it's gonna appear and just remember guys whenever you are using you have multiple functionalities over here one is just use simple like that but if you want to just select a particular sales between two dates you can do that too for that you have to create the measure over here and if you would like to know more about that then kindly drop your comments in the comment section and i'm gonna create another video for you now let's move forward and discuss about the number three feature what is that so number third feature is the new way of expressing date into your dex expression so previously what we had if we have to mention the date and time and some format then what we have to do we have to come over here like this is my sales dex expression over here and you can see that over here if i have to filter out my fact internet sales table i have to mention like date then time separately over here but with the new functionality in power bi what we can do instead of that we can directly use a single string over here that means i have another dex expression and over here you can see that i'm using in the same line i don't need to use the plus and the time and all but you can see that over here i'm using in the same string all the date formatting so i don't need to use that plus sign then define it okay I have to design and define further etc if you would like to know more about this feature you can drop the comment in the comment section and i'll let you know so you can see over here once i did this then both the measures are going to return me the same value so sales is the first one which is our classical method you can see the way we used to write the dex code and in the new way also it's going to return me the same value so that's how we can use it now last one what i'm going to discuss with you is the evaluation configuration settings so this is the last feature that we are going to discuss for today and it's very important in order to enhance the performance of your power bi reports whenever you are using the import mode or direct query mode to get the data into your power bi right now i'm using the import mode over here uh, to get the data from my adventure works dw 2019 so what is this evaluation configuration settings let's talk about this power bi desktop optimizes query performance when importing data or when using direct query by evaluating tables simultaneously so whenever you are working on that power bi automatically used to do it however in some specific situations you might want to influence the behavior and change the defaults that means you don't want that power bi to take care of it itself you want to define something inside that that means you want to define how many number of queries should execute at a time for example when the data import is taking too long or power bi desktop is taking too much resources on your machine so in that case you want the control to be in your hand until now you could only influence these settings by making changes to the registry but now onwards Microsoft have added two configuration options in Power BI Desktop, which you can see on your screen. The number one is maximum number of simultaneous evaluations, like at a one time, how many 
evaluations can happen at the same time. This configures the level of parallelism for query executions in Power Query. Number second, maximum memory used per simultaneous evaluation. How much memory you want to dedicate it for any evaluations to occur. This configures the available memory per evaluation. By using settings, you can make sure the loading of the data is optimized for your machine so you can get the best experience. So now let me show you how to do that. So first of all, you have to go to the options and settings. So let's go to file and here are the options and settings. Once you will click over there, you will get the options. Click on this and here you have the data load under the global settings. Over here, click on this load more and if you will come over here on your Microsoft documentation, it would explain you everything that you need to know. So you can come over here, you can check what is the maximum number of simultaneous evaluation, what is the maximum memory used per simultaneous evaluations or how to change the settings. But let's go to the Power BI desktop over here and here you will see there are the two options. One is maximum number of simultaneous evaluations. How many evaluations you want simultaneously? You can say one, two, or for example, in my case, my data set is huge. So in that case, I can use just one. And also how much memory I want to dedicate it to you. So I can do that too. And for those guys who are very new to Power BI, I would request you to always uncheck this option, time intelligence, auto date time for new files. Always uncheck this, do not use it into your Power BI reports or dashboards. Why? There's a reason. If you would do that, Power BI creates a hierarchy. Because of that, it has to create more data behind the scene. That means it has to create the separate columns. And because of that, data size becomes huge. So don't do that unless until you really need it. And even you need it, create your separate data table and try to use that one. So that's going to improve your performance a lot. And also you will notice that your file size is reducing a lot. If you want to know more about this, I'll provide you link in the description section where we have already created a video and you can go and check the performance differences with this check-in and without this one. So once you are certain how many number of simultaneous evaluations you want, you can mention over here and according to that Power BI reports are going to execute and after that you can just simply click OK and it's done. So guys these were the top 4 new features in Power BI. If you would like to know more, kindly drop us comment in the comment section or write to us if you have any further query and concern. Don't forget to connect with us and also don't forget to subscribe our channel, hit the bell icon and yes, follow us for more exciting videos.